Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 48 for Wednesday, June 3rd, 2015. Material Design. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash arena. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash arena. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. It's been a while since I took a look at some cool apps adhering closely to Google's material design spec. I know I go on and on all the time about my adoration of material design, partially because I feel like the approach is visually gorgeous while still being simplistic in its approach. It adds motion effects that I think kind of supplement the experience. It usually doesn't seem to slow things down. It adds tasteful touches of things like shadowing that brings a realistic layer to what would otherwise be kind of drab and flat. Partially also because it unifies developers and designers into a particular way of thinking about the design of apps. So users, like myself, have some predictability to the experience. I feared at first that something like uh, material design would kind of make it difficult for brands to differentiate their offerings. After all, if everyone followed the spec to the extreme, you'd think that all apps would kind of look identical to each other. Would Twitter clients all look the same? SMS messaging apps, would they all just kind of have the same look top to bottom? Well, it turns out that some of the best material designs bring in the elements that elevate the experience and keep things uniform while still differentiating their apps in other ways that maintain that all-important brand identity. So without further ado, let's take a look at three apps that tackle material design in different ways, sometimes award-winning ways in this week's Roundup. First, an app I personally use every single day, and it's key to how I curate content for the many shows I produce here at Twit. It's called Pocket, and it's a cross-platform app for saving web content for later. One of the benefits of Pocket is that anything you save to it will be loaded for offline viewing until you dismiss it from your list. So if you find yourself stuck underground on a train with no internet connectivity, you have plenty of news content to keep you busy. This is my list, basically everything that I've marked for reading later in Pocket that I haven't already dismissed as read. Yeah, I keep a lot of stuff in here, but thankfully, Pocket has no limits to the amount of stuff you store using the service. Tap into a story and you get an article view that strips out only the text content, making it bandwidth efficient and easier on the eyes. Display settings offer up a few extra options so you won't strain your eyes, wouldn't want that. There's a way to view it on the native web page as well if you prefer to do it that way. And if you'd rather listen to the story, you can. Tap Listen TTS and the text will be read back to you thanks to built-in text-to-speech conversion with playback Google settings uh, that allow you to adjust the speed as well as the language that it reads back in. Walter. Google opened another front in its war on passwords. Star an item to add to your favorite, or you can simply tap that check mark when you're all done with it. That will remove the story from my list and it'll live forever in your archive. You can also narrow your list based on the type of content. So finding images or video content from your list is made easier. If a video player is on the page, for example, it'll be listed in that video category. You can add your own tags as well to keep things organized the way you like. And Pocket also includes sharing features, which you can track inside the app when someone shares a story with you. Pocket does have a premium service for $4.99 per month or $44.99 per year, which gives you a permanent library, which protects you when a link goes dark online, for example. Uh, also included full document search tools and suggested 
tags. But I've been perfectly satisfied with the free service. Pocket looks beautiful on phones as well as on tablets, which is why Google awarded the app a Material Design Award this year for adaptive layouts at Google I.O. Pocket can be found in the Play Store right now. Another Material Design Award winner at this year's Google I.O. was Tumblr, which won the award for Delightful Animation. Tumblr as a platform is incredibly visual, so it makes sense that the app be designed with that visual flair intact. Tumblr is a microblogging platform with a social networking component that makes it easy to follow your favorite Tumblogs as they call it. Fans of animated GIFs will find plenty of specialty Tum blogs to follow, plus all the usual publications are represented here. But what makes Tumblr awesome is how easy they've made the process of rolling your own Tumblr site. That's why there's currently more than 238 million blogs within the service. Taking a closer look at the app, this here is my home feed with all of the Tum blogs that I've followed. Practically every single post has an image associated with it, making everything very visual. Any post you like can be easily reposted to your own Tum blog. All you gotta do is tap that reshare button. And you can like that post by tapping the heart. And all of this information is logged in your own personal profile, making it easy to access later. If you wish to add your own content to your Tum blog and not simply reshare the work of others, just tap the floating action button and now you'll get a sense as to why Google gave the award to Tumblr for the app. Material design is all about bringing a tangible quality to the user experience, and you can see that displayed to perfection here, with the pencil kind of morphing magically into an X as the other elements animate onto the screen. And from there, you can choose to share a number of predetermined content types. There's video, photos, a quote, which you can add attribution to, text, if you wanna go the traditional blog route, a link to a particular place on the web, and chat, which is basically a way to reenact a conversation. One thing Tumblr has going for it, in the time I spent reviewing the app, I probably spent an additional hour just browsing, because once you start scrolling, it's practically impossible to stop. Find Tumblr for free in the Play Store. Finally, this app might not have won an award at Google I.O., but it's a cool way to bring the color palette of material design to your wallpaper. Sadly, this means my favorite little thing, that floating action button won't get any play, but you can't deny that these motion-infused wallpapers embody material design from a graphical sense. Kroom Live Wallpaper brings the look of material design to your home screen in an evolving, fluid, colorful way, and is tweakable, so you can set it however you want it. In the settings, I'm given a number of controls. First, shapes gives you the templates that your designs will model themselves after. You can select however many or however few you wish. Choose from 12 different templates there and then select colors. And you'll be given 27 different color combinations to apply to that template. The breath animation of your background can be activated and then set to any speed range. This is essentially how the graphical elements follow their own individual motion paths as you watch them. You can see what I mean when I set it to its highest level here. You can also activate and tweak the speed settings for the start animation. Anytime you go to your home screen from another app, let's say, the live wallpaper will slide into view at first, as you can see here. A battery saving mode is included, and I noticed no difference in the look of the effect when it was activated, so might as well keep that turned on. And finally, a timer option, so the background switches based on the timing that you've selected. The effect is minimal, but effective, and works on devices running 4.1 or above, so you don't need Lollipop to get in on the material design train. Check out Kruma Live Wallpaper for 99 cents in the Play Store. At Google I.O. last week, Google's VP of Design, Matias Duarte, handed out six awards to the developers and designers of apps that Google deemed worthy to receive the first annual Material Design Award, covering all facets of motion, interface, layout, and animation. Of course, Tumblr and Pocket were just two of those lucky apps to get the award. A few other apps that we featured on the show were honored as well. Pocket Cast, which is my favorite po uh, podcast client on Android, and Weather Timeline. But also a few we haven't shown, B&H Photo and New York, the New York Times app uh, for typography, of all things. 
course. Now, this is super cool uh, to get called out by Google itself for your awesome design prowess. But what this really does is signal even further that material design is very important to Google and the platform in general. So if you're designing an app or you have one that needs to be updated, you might consider checking out the spec for yourself. I know I'll appreciate it when I use your awesome app down the line. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode, and that's lynda.com, which is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who want to make things happen. Maybe you want to develop an Android app. You want to master Excel, take better photos, or sharpen your Photoshop skills. lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. lynda.com just added some great new business courses, including Advanced Microsoft Project, uh, FileMaker Pro 14 Essential Training, the Foundations of Business Analytics, and Operations Management Fundamentals. There's even a course on asking for a raise. We could all use that, of course. Uh, Linda even has a course on how to use Google's new Photos service. That service was announced less than a week ago at Google I.O. By the way, that app may or may not be this week's big app in a few minutes, but that's how fast Linda is at adding new timely content. With the lynda.com membership, you can watch and learn from top experts. They're all passionate about teaching. Uh, you can stream thousands of video courses on demand and learn at your own schedule. Uh, at your own pace, really. Courses are structured so you can watch them from start to finish or consume in bite-sized pieces. You can browse each course transcript beginning to end to follow along, or you can search for an answer and skip right to that point. Take notes as you go, refer to those later, or download tutorials and watch them on the go. That includes access on your Android or iOS device. You can create and save playlists for courses you want to watch, customize your learning path, share with your friends, colleagues, and your team members. Your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to try something new, I want you to check out lynda.com slash arena, and you can sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash arena. We thank them for their support. And of course, when you're supporting Twit sponsors, you're supporting Twit, so thank you as well. All right, this week's big app, as I teased a few seconds ago, also made a big splash at Google I.O. this year, though it wasn't created by some indie developer in the basement. This one's by the Goog itself, and I'm absolutely loving it. Let's take a look. Of all the announcements at this year's Google I.O., the one that seems to have a lot of people talking right now is the new Photos app by Google. Probably because, aside from being a nice-looking app on Android, iOS, and on the web, Google is offering practically unlimited storage for all of your photos inside the service. It's taken me a few days to sync my entire iPhoto library from my desktop at home to the service, and now I have a metric ton of photos accessible from anywhere thanks to the cloud. Taking a closer look at the Android app, Google has made some changes that make managing this massive amount of photos a lot easier than in the past. Gone are the days of manually tagging and maintaining photo albums. Google knows enough about your images, thanks to its algorithmic smarts, that you can search your way to pretty much anything. For example, just tap that search button and you'll see three sections that you'll use to narrow your results. People this is where you'll find images of the faces that appear in your pictures most. Google has analyzed and grouped the results based on all the different faces in your library. And it's incredibly accurate and super useful. Then places where you'll find grouped images based on landmarks that Google recognizes, plus any metadata associated with those images. And finally, things, which are groups of images based on any number of recurring elements and themes. Now, down at the bottom, you can show only videos, you can access your Google Drive images, or this button here, Creations. This is essentially the new term for Google's Auto Awesomes. Here, Google will do things like stylize particular images with filters, automatically animate sequence images into an animated GIF, take a collection of related images and create a collage for you. All of these appear without you needing to do anything. You can save the results to your library permanently. Google Photos might make you want to do what I did and upload every digital photo that you have, which is a lot. Uh, pinching inward on that list takes you from the weekly view to monthly to a more inclusive monthly view that makes navigating throughout the years a bit easier. 
Of course, you can still create your own collections, including curated albums, dynamically edited movies, stories, animations, and collages, if you don't want to wait for Google to do it for you on the fly. Google Photos really impresses, and I can't wait to see how it evolves. Find photos in the Play Store for free. I will admit, importing my entire iPhoto library took me a few days. I don't know if it was my upstream bandwidth, uh, but I'm guessing Google has a lot of people managing you know, their uploads right now to the service. Uh, there's a small asterisk to the claim of free and unlimited storage, but it's not a huge deal for most people. Free applies to photos with a maximum of 16 megapixels. And any pictures that you upload that are larger than that will actually be downscaled appropriately. And I've heard pretty good reports as far as the quality of that downscaling. Also, videos must be a maximum of 1080p resolution. And again, downscaling will occur if you're uploading 4K video to Google Photos. You can choose to upload full-size files if you prefer, but you'll have a storage limit and Google has ways for you to increase that storage on a cost per month basis. So definitely look into that if that's important to you. It doesn't cost a whole lot. Uh, but it's, there's definitely a fee there if you want the full-size image. Um, and that's about it this week. A little bit of IO news and some stuff outside of IO as well, but I hope you enjoyed it. I always love hearing from you guys, so definitely send in your favorite apps, categories, everything that you have to arena at twit.tv. It all gets filed into my doc, and I look at that every single week. There's also a subreddit that I frequently check out uh, for your recommendations there as well. Categories, apps, if you have ideas for categories that I've posted for a future episode, include them. That's androidapparena.reddit.com. You can share all that stuff with me there. You can also follow me on Google+. Plus. I sometimes talk about Android there. I also host a live viewing party of each week's episode. I'm always on set to answer any questions you might have about the apps in the show, or really anything Android, and that happens every Wednesday around 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight at live.twit.tv. If you missed that, it's okay. All you really need to remember is the show page, and that is twit.tv slash arena. All the information is kept there. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me once again today. My name is Jason Howell. I'll see you next week in the arena.